Hello, it's Suzanne in Ohio. Hey, I sat down to paint a little fall leaf and I thought, well, I'll turn the camera on and see if anybody's interested. I'm going to attempt to do more of a watercolor technique on this painting. I am thinking fall and so what I did was I went to um, free images let me show you this. I mentioned this in another video. Today I'm at um, a website called publicdomainpictures.net. And if you want to look something up, once you get there to that website, they has, have a search bar and you can look up any subject matter you want. So you can see that I've got probably a mountain maple leaf right there. And I want to just practice these watercolor techniques and see if I can get myself into a routine of easier painting. So I'll explain that in a minute. I won't show you my image constantly, but I'll explain what I'm doing. So this watercolor technique, um, I watch a British artist a lot and I wanted to try more of her technique. Oh, boy, I'm not even in the same category, but I could see where this would work on fabric as well. So here's how I start drawing. This time, what I did was I looked at just the main veins on the subject, and I put them in first. So I thought, well, maybe you'd be interested in that. You can also... Instead of free sketching, you can print out your image from, from the, uh, whatever you found that's free. And then you can simply trace it, either using a light table or holding it up to the window. But I'm just going to free sketch this today. And in order to keep the dimensions, the first thing I did, and the first thing I'll do, is pull you down closer. Um, I, just, I just, quick put three veins in and then I came out here to the points of the vein and put in the first peaks and remember nothing is perfect and then I will look at my image and ask myself okay what happens over here basically it takes a nice smooth curve with just a few teeth meaning those little jagged edges that are on the edges of maple leaves and also rose leaves and all kind of things. So I'm going to loosely sketch that in here. And then I'm going to look and see how far the peak, this peak comes down toward the center of the leaf. And it should stop right there. From there, my basic shape is going to be a triangle. So I'm just going to come out here and put a few of those, you might call them saw teeth or whatever, put them on there. And then over here on this side, I'm going to look at my image and ask how far down into the leaf does this point come? And it really just comes here. There's not really a tooth there, but for the sake of continuity, I think I'll put one in. And then the whole outside of this leaf has a general shape like that. And that'll be the first thing I'll do. And then there's a small vein that comes up here into one of those little teeth. And this side really just has a jiggy jaggy shape. So Let's see. Uh, right in here, I gotta see how many teeth I want to put. And that's should be a deeper valley. So now, does it really matter if you're this precise? Absolutely not. Okay, that's the shape I'm gonna work with. Now I'm just going to look at the veins and where they go. 
maple leaf veins only the this maple leaf only the three main veins converge down here. Uh, the rest of them travel opposite each other up the leaf. And you know, from there up, they get kind of indistinguishable. I don't want to try to replicate this leaf uh, absolutely perfect. I want to give myself sort of a guideline and then I will imply the rest of it. By imply, I mean it's not going to be perfect. All right, this sort of vein comes right up into the crotch of the V right there, and so does this one. These are funny. They're just magnificent. All right, this watercolor technique, what I really want to try to do is I'm going to just move, I'm going to move my computer, my iPad back out of the way. And this watercolor technique, I love this British artist. She puts in all of her darker things first, simple enough to say, and then puts a light wash over everything. And of course, she goes back time and time again to tweak things, and that's wonderful. I just want to get a more painterly watercolor look on this piece, so I'm checking out what brushes I have here to work with. And truly, I don't have the perfect brush for this because all my real sharp rounds are in storage. So as I told you before, I bought a cheap set from Joann's. And if I didn't like what was on the end of them, I used a pair of scissors and gave them a little haircut. It's not like we're doing a fine piece of art. I chose these colors because there's a little bit of all of these colors in this leaf, and I mean a little bit, all except for the yellow gold. It's quite a yellow leaf. So I'm going to squirt out the appropriate amount of paint onto just one of those what's called waxed paper plates. You can have a styrofoam one if you want. But this is what I've got laying here right now. And I could probably paint this whole leaf with an eighth of a teaspoon of paint. But you just really can't squirt out that small of an amount. Get some of this off of the paint here. And if this goes well, before my paint dries up, I'll, I'll try to paint something else. very little red. I mean one toothpick of red on this leaf. My one light is sagging, so let me see if I can reposition it here. I really don't know how to correct all the problems that are going on. Hold on a minute. Just getting my one this is an all-natural daylight lamp, and I'm trying to get it to work because, gosh, it's wonderful how close to real daylight it gets you. Don't know if this will work at all whatsoever. I'm just trying to finagle something here for a minute. Nope, you can hear. My little support going all over the place. So I'll just have to work with it. Okay, we need some of the chartreuse. And again, like I told you before, you can mix all these colors. And you should learn how to mix colors. But if you've got them already, which I have a ton of craft paint, then I'm just going to do that. Okay, there's a little bit of all the colors. I like to put a puddle of water, and I'll just put a puddle here, and I'll reach over and get that when I need to. And we'll use a lot of water when we put the 
find a wash on. Now I can't show you everything. I don't think everything will fit on my little desk space. But let's start right here. That's more of the plate than you need to see. Let me try working this way. Okay. All right, now remember what I sketched this out with was these Frixion Pilot Pens. Gosh, I don't even think you can see that, can you? Let me come down here. Oh, isn't this lighting just horrible? And that's what they look like. And as I said before, you get them in the stationery section. You can buy them at quilt stores which I think they overcharge for them, but you can get them there because once you mark on fabric with them, you can iron over them with an iron and they will totally disappear. Mm -hmm. So wonderful, wonderful. Okay, there's Joanne Fabrics sending me a coupon. They want me to come and spend money. So the first thing I'm going to do is put in some of the detail with dark paint because that's what the artist does and then of course that's really to make it work right I really should let this dry so I'm going to turn my iron on and speed dry it when we're done with this stage <coughs> this is how you have to do everything when you don't know how to edit your video but, so be it. All right, I am going to put out a little tiny bit of black. Just to make that a darker brown when the time, when the time is right. Now, of course, you could sit for hours, even days, and work on this and try to make this leaf look real realistic but I that's you know for the decorative art that I do that would be a total total waste of time so I am not a fine artist I just like to do decorative stuff enough to help me out with my fabric arts and my um, paper arts now there's very little of this dark color in here, but I might make more than the actual photograph calls for. You do have that, you know, freedom if you want to take your artist's liberty and just do things a little bit different. Um, so I'm looking at just adding some dark along these veins and I can see I'm going to have to work this way and what I'm going to do is keep looking up at my photo enough to get the idea in Now, I'm a quiet painter because I'm concentrating at the same time. So, you just chill here with me for a few minutes. I'll just tell you what my thinking is as I go. I want a little bit of I don't want to fill in every vein with this dark color. I just want to put enough in here that will hopefully eventually look like a shadow. And I'm going to go back and redo these veins with um, just whatever, <coughs> a green or
I used to do a lot of art with micron pens. <coughs> I would paint and then add all my detail with micron pens. And I did that because I'm not that good of an artist. But once you get the micron pen on there, um, then everything looks better than it really is. So that was my way of cheating. Now this outside leaf does have some sharp, dark details on it. When I sat down to do this, my first thinking was, um, I want a focal point for the front of, an, of a new journal. So I thought, well, I'll just paint something. Not that I don't have a hundred images right here in my little cloistered area, but I'll paint something. Um, because I had an idea for uh, my next journal project to see if any of my subscribers would want to work along with me. And it was going to be, and will be, kind of a little challenge. I wondered if anybody wanted to um, have the challenge of making a journal just with what you can find at a one-trip thrift store. Just one trip. Uh, and I got the idea because yesterday I went to my wonderful thrift store right here in my close. To, I'm not living in my favorite little town right this minute, but I'm only four miles down the road. So I went to the thrift store specifically to look for something uh, to help my sister decorate her new she shed. So Okay, what did I find in there? It was a bonus day for journal supplies. A bonus day. I'm not kidding. I thought I could make a journal out of just what my haul was for yesterday. So I thought, oh, what a fun thing to do. To challenge myself for a journal with uh, just from the thrift store and what I've got laying on my desk and what I can find in the trash or the junk mail, so to speak. Okay, that's as much black outline as I'm going to put on it right now. Now, some of these veins on the actual photograph are a light green. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to uh, mix up a little green here and add alongside those. And not too wet a paint because I want this stuff to dry pretty quick. And I'm just going to put some of those in. Uh, not every vein is green. Some of them are gold, blah, blah, blah. So we'll just put some paint on here. How about we think of it that way? We'll just put some paint on here. And how can you go wrong with a fall leaf? Because when you pick them up, they're every different combination. You could make leaves up. I'm sure, and somewhere out there in nature land is a leaf just like that. Now, I'm not happy with that shade of green. Nothing looks yellowy green enough, so I'm over here adding some more yellow to it. And let's just add some pure yellow right on that. This is really kind of a chartreuse color that I have here in this bottle. One of my favorite colors in the whole world. It's funny on this leaf, the green veins run right through what the rest of the leaf is yellow. It's just what part of the leaf lets go of its chlorophyll the soonest. It 
So remember, this time we're working from the darker colors to the lighter colors. Really, you want to put in all your detail with these darker colors or truer colors. And then we'll put a wash over the whole thing. So continuing with the thought that this could be the front of a journal cover, uh, my goal is to get it painted uh, and then do some slow stitch. Probably right on top of it. I don't know. I picked up some fabrics yesterday too at the thrift store because all mine are in storage. This was just a little package of odd things. Okay, I'm switching colors. That whole side of me, most of the veins were green. Now I'm going to switch to gold veins. Let's use rust and gold and just get some different colors in there. So, and those that black is automatically acting like a little shadow, which is perfect. So what was I saying? All my fabrics in storage, and um, I found a little packet of some colors I don't have. Now, if you've watched any of my videos, you know I do um, fabric collage with that heat and bond light, and I'm always looking for small packages of scraps because surely in there will be something for me to add to. Um, my collection for collage work. So what I did was um, didn't have a lot of variation in the fabrics and lo and behold I got invited to a basement sale where a quilter had passed away and her family was selling <clears throat> her stash. Oh that was great. So I was able to get a different variety of fabrics than I've ever had before. Well, before I put those all away and organized them, I tore one third of a yard off of every single piece and folded it up. And they fold up just perfect for a shoe box. And that's what I have is about those plastic shoe boxes, about eight or nine of them organized in different colorways. So when I'm doing that fabric collage, I just have to go to where I have those and color families that I need and pull out a bunch of. That way I'm not dragging out big pieces of fabric, say just to get something that's mostly red or blah, blah, blah. You get the whole idea. So if I find small pieces of fabric and they're reasonable, I snatch them up. One of my uh, viewers just yesterday asked me, uh, she was looking at one of my videos about fabric collage and said a tutorial would be really amazing was the word I think she used. So I'll do one of those real soon, like soon probably by the end of the month. We should do a fall leaf because that's what would be amazing. It is fall. It's upon us. And if you're doing anything like that. Now the next most prominent color on this leaf is green. This leaf still has quite a bit of chlorophyll. And I'm just going to randomly add it at different places that I see it on my photo. And again, I can't take the time to copy this leaf entirely, entirely, or we would be here for the next week and a half. But I'm going to splotch down some of this pure green right where I see it in the leaf. Now, before these splotches get too too dark or too dry, I want to add a little bit of just water 
Oh, I'm going to switch brushes to, I'm going to switch to this one that's acrylic bristles because they're nice and stiff. And I'm going to encourage this green with some water to move out into the fabric. It may or may not. I might have waited too long because it was awfully dry paint. Well, that one's working good. But you can see these other two, I left them just 30 seconds too long. So let's go back and add a little bit of green right on top of that now that it's got some water on it. And maybe I can get rid of those hard lines. Yeah, that's working fine. Okay, I'm looking back at my specimen, which is on my iPad screen. And and that's a little bit washed out. That leaf has true dark green, leaf green. And let's come back over here. That's on both sides of that vein. I am no painter, as I said before, but a few little things that I would tell you are just from my experience, what works for me. There's a little bit too much water on there, so I just dabbed it with a paper towel. And now I'm going back to adding some true green. Don't forget to add your water when you need to. And encourage it to bleed out a little bit. Over here where I put this little bit of very dark, that leaf has, you know, the rust starting where they get rusty and brown. And so I'm going to come over here and add my browns. And just jiggle your paintbrush until you get something organic looking. Don't make it too neat. I like to let the brush wobble around because that's how rust, the rust color, the, the degrading parts look on a leaf. And I'm going to blend right in with that black. And I might come back and add a little bit more black to it. We'll see. Let's see what it looks like. I'm just tapping in a little bit of black paint. Also, don't forget your acrylics look much darker slash brighter sometimes after they dry. Let's see. <clears throat> On this leaf <coughs> over here, there is one very dark. <coughs> Sorry about the tickly throat. <coughs> I should have my water here. <coughs> yep, that always comes after. Makes me wonder if some pollen flew in the window. <coughs> well, maybe trashing. <coughs> trashing this video. And we've got such a good start. Okay. Now, what are my next most prominent flaws? 
in the leaf. It has quite a few. It's got a lot of these little circle-like things, but I don't want to make them too precise, so I'm jiggling my brush. And let's get a little water and let it bleed out. Wow, that's more than bleed out, Suzanne. So let's just create another one. It has to be pollen. Hey, right down the street from where I'm at, <clears throat> it's about a five acre field full of uh, goldenrod. It is beautiful and it's in full bloom. We've got a nice breeze. That could be what's coming my way. Now let's look at this and check our colors. How's our colors looking? Oh, that looks okay. Don't get everything the same and everything too uniform. Just don't do it because then it looks too contrived. Now we've got a tiny, I mean a tiny bit of red in this leaf at the oddest places, but I'm going to stick with following what looks like this is a true leaf. It's photograph. It's not, doesn't look like it's been photoshopped or anything. So let's just try it. The reason I chose this leaf is we have a mountain maple right outside in the backyard. Actually, this whole neighborhood was planted. It's a development. It was planted with these mountain maples, and they do turn brilliant red. <clears throat> um, but the funny thing about the ones I've seen, the one that I had at my former house, is... Um, Every leaf on the tree, of course you don't get that anyway, but mountain maples tend to turn in pieces and parts. And so you don't get one big show or a great big limb full of color like with the other maples. And I do know a little something about leaves turning. I'm from West Virginia. Okay, I like that look. Let me just add a tiny bit of water. Just encourage it a little bit if it's not too late. Whoop, I went outside the lines there. Does it matter? No. And let's add a tiny bit of water here. It might pull it out and let it bleed, might not. All right. So. <clears throat> one more small thing I just want to put in a little bit of these I call them mosaic type veins not everywhere good I couldn't do that but just here and there and that they'll practically kind of disappear into the leaf after we put the water on and the paint wash and don't go away because we are heading for really the most exciting part is when you put the wash on. Now what I want to do before I put the wash is I want to put, <clears throat> I want to put more of a little bit more of a solid edge around. That way what that does is kind of corral your paint. So I'm going to make sure there's some real solid paint around my edges and not every edge is the same color so I'm just dipping without washing my brush off I'm just dipping it into different paints and don't get too sharp of a line <clears throat> a little bit of water here Help it bleed out. And let's see. That leaf goes into a bright yellow. So get some bright yellow over here. And overlap your paints. 
I said in another video, the wonderful thing about paint on fabric is <clears throat> you can mix your colors right on the fabric. Now, I wouldn't be so cautious about going out, outside the so-called lines, meaning the red lines, but because I put that black on there, I don't want to negate that. I don't want to cover over all those, so I'm trying to stay just barely <clears throat> on the inside of that black line because I still want it to show. Otherwise, I'd take the paint and go back over it again. So, you can see I'm ending up doing most of this with a very small brush. I'm going to put a little bit of black right in here. And because I had brown in my paintbrush, it does not show up as black at all. But it gives me a darker shade of brown. Okay, when I'm coming around here, the leaf is telling me that it's mostly bright yellow and chartreuse. So I'm just going to fill in here, like I said, and delineate my edges. Not that coffin jag <clears throat> was unplanned. So sorry about that. Now I'm picking up a little bit of that chartreuse. Now I don't want to take any thick paint right over top of my veins either because I don't want them to go away. So I'll just come down alongside it right there. And I'm going to turn this because I work right hand a little bit better. Oh, we're almost to the exciting part. When the wash goes on, you just won't believe what happens to this leaf. So the hard part, so-called hard part, let's call it the tedious part. You can put as much or as little as you want on there. Now I'll show you uh, what's on my iPad screen one more time and tell you how I would think about it. I'm looking to see if this leaf really has any orange in it, and it really doesn't. But for the sake of interest, I'm going to add some right along where I added the red. And because I've already got it squirted out, why not? It's our leaf, and we can paint it any way we want. We're into a bright gold color, and I don't have a bright gold, so I'm going to take some gold and mix it with some orange. And that gives me more of an orangey gold, which all I had was brownish gold. And we'll put some of this. And... Work it in, and there it's laying on top of the threads, which is fine. Because that ends up looking like your highlights. It'll get filled in with the wash, very thin. And so, coming around this corner here with these teeth and I don't have a black line there so I have to follow my red lines the markings that I put on there a little 
bit of water. And right here, I'll just be following the red line. <clears throat> and that leaf actually just goes back to yellow. So without washing my brush, just get some yellow. Okay, we're almost all the way around. There's still some brown in my brush, you can see. And there we are. Now, that came outside the lines, that little bit of red blood out there. All I'm going to do is just, I'm going to add a little stem. These leaves have a very short stem. And by the time this all gets done, you'll never notice that. So... There. Now we can use the paint on our plate to mix up our washes. <clears throat> I'm going to use a little bit bigger brush, but not a massive one. <clears throat> and for our wash, you can either approach this as if you're going to put one, just one wash, or, or if you're going to dry it out and then put another wash. I'm going to try to just do one, but I'm going. What I'm going to do is add some water first, just plain water, just so that once I get the wash over here, it doesn't stick to my fabric instantly before I can figure out what I want to do with it. <clears throat> now that water is pretty much laying on top of the fabric, and that's why I love painting on this canvas. It just doesn't soak in until you work it in. And I'm going to take my time working it in. And watch what it wants to do. Because your paint can really do all the work for you. If you just give it a minute and see what it wants to do. And if you don't like the results then just make up your mind. You can always paint over it. Wonderful thing about acrylics is light paint can even cover dark paint. Not so with watercolors. So let's look at this leaf again. Here, if you can see my iPad, you can see most of it. That is a mixture of gold and yellow. Very little green wash. Tiny bit, but very little. So I'm just going to attempt to put that light yellow wash over it first. And then um, then I'll go back and charge in some of the gold over top of it. So here it goes. Here goes our wash. You can see it's very watery, not as watery as I use sometimes, but pretty watery. Actually, most of the time a wash is more water than it is paint. And just drop it in, and there's already water. Don't feel like you have to fill in every single space where you see fabric. Let some of it show through. The more imperfect it is, the more painterly it will look. And what are we after? Just a decorator piece. Just something to play with with our journals and our fabric art. You could turn this little thing into uh, a tiny little wall hanging.
Wonderful. And if you like your piece when you're done, don't forget to put it on the scanner and scan it and use that image. Print off some of your uh, copies in the right size and make some fall greeting cards. Send them out. Okay, there's our first wash. And this um, leaf has a lot of gold in it. I'm going to get me another brush full of water. I'm just going to put it right there. And this is um, yellowy gold, so I'm just going to use a little bit of this gold gold, and then I'm going to add some yellow, because it's a light yellowy gold. You can see it's almost all water, not too much paint. Don't have to mix perfectly. Let's just charge it in here. Charging means dropping that color down into what is already wet and letting it uh, letting it move around. The water itself will move it around. And most of that gold on this leaf goes down on the left and the right. And you will get sometimes what's called a bloom or a line or whatever your paint while the paints reacting and doing its thing and just let it go because that's part of what makes it a painting now that's a pretty nice looking leaf um i don't i'm not happy with that bright 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 chartreuse right there so i'm just going to put a little wash right over top just to tone it back a smidge. Okay, now we could leave this leaf exactly like it is, but I want to go in and try to put a few more of those tiny little vein, uh, brown, dark brown veins in there, which I don't know where my brain went when I was knowing that. Maybe a starter coffin. But um, let's just add a few because I only put them in in one spot, and that ain't right. You know that if you're going to put a few, um, just put a few more and tell your eye, just imply where they might have been. We just don't want it to look like one, one little patch of them right there. See, not much to it. Just imply. Okay, that's enough. It tells your brain there's still some visible tiny little leaves. Okay, now is there any place I want to doctor up? I could leave it as is or I could continue to work on it a little bit. I want it to have just a little bit more personality. So all I'm going to do is mix myself right here. I just brought some red down there and put right in with that gold. And I just want to add a little bit more. Now, the paint right here is really gravitating out into what is already wet. I like that. I guess it just didn't have quite enough personality for me. So now from this point on, I'm making this up. I am making this leaf up. Just put some red on top of that yellow. Watch it bleed out. Colors on a leaf do overlap each other. Nature, especially fall, one of my favorite, favorite, favorite times. And 
doing a lot of gardening and everything, I spent a lot of time observing. Yeah, I'm liking this leaf a lot better. It's getting a little bit more personality in my opinion. I'm just going to balance this out, not perfectly, but just so the eye doesn't stay on one side of the leaf or the other. I'm not happy with this rust tip over here. I'm just going to add some red to it. I, at this point, it's just a watered down reddish color. Okay, that is enough. How do you like that? Okay, anything else you're not happy with about your leaf, let it dry or speed dry it with an iron and then go back and add a little bit more detail. I'm going to make myself leave this leaf simple for what I'm going to do with it. I'm going to do some stitching around it. I don't know if it'll be by hand or free motion on the sewing machine, but I'm going to make this the front of my next journal. I might even stitch in the word fall up here, uh, hand stitch it or paint it in. Look, I got a little splot of green up there. So guess what I'm going to do? I will put a few more just to match that. Let's do that. I have a paintbrush that I doctored up by cutting the tips out so that I could get some splatters. So I'll just go along and do a little bit of this and that will give me an impression of the background. And then what I did on my, when I painted my pillow fronts, I showed you a couple of them, about six of them I think. Um, I took, you know, the old paintbrush and flicked the paint on it, and that would look good on this. But this will serve as a background. Let's get a few more closer to the leaf, and that implies that it's shadowy. And see, an accident can be a happy accident. It really can. Okay, that's enough for now. Oh, wait. Should we put a watery shadow? I did that on all my um, pillow tops, and I love that technique. So for this size, let's just do that. So I want a shadowy look back there, a very fall look. I'm going to truly, almost total water, mix up a little of uh, just this. That's one, one tenth paint and nine tenths water. And so what I want to do is just work this right along here. Oh, forgot. Have to have some fresh water right away. And that will pull it out. Let's get a tiny bit of black in that. And just working along there <coughs> with a water filled brush. Lots of water, very little paint. And there's a lot of black. I didn't know it was, but there's another happy accident. That will give me a wonderful shadow down here at the bottom of the leaf. And I'll just scrub on the paint until it begins to work itself out. There you go. No problem. Pure water there. Dirty water at this point, by the way. And so 
up. I'm almost out of your view, so let's turn this around. Get repositioned here as I come up this side. And just tilt your plate like I'm doing. And any watery, watery, watery paint that flows down to the edge where you can get a hold of it, use that. If you have more than one color, wonderful. Wonderful. Put some water on there so that I'm coming around this side. And I'll show you how I did it with a bigger brush when I was working on that big space of those pillows. This is just water. Just put a lot of water there. Come over here and get a little paint and just push it up, leaving a white space or natural fabric color right up next to the leaf. Now, I want to get some chartreuse in this. And what I found worked wonderful is when I did this, oh, when that dried, that had the prettiest little technique. Or, yeah, technique, I guess. And if you're going to go all the way around, ask yourself, okay, what color is in my leaf that I haven't put around the edge yet? Little red. My brush is dirty, so it looks a little chartreuse there. But let's just get a little bit of red paint and add right to it. I mean little, like so little you would think there wasn't any paint on your bristles. Okay. There we have it. Okay, that is all for today. I promise I'm done. And um, I hope you'll paint something and think about doing that journal challenge with me. I'm challenging myself to make a, a journal out of nothing but what I found at the thrift store in a one-day trip. Now, if you have to go two places, as long as it's in the same day. All right, I'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching.